Hey everybody, this is Rido, and we are back to You Don't Know Jack. Let's play. Okie doke. Alright, gang, we got new players. Let's get going in a second. 60 seconds. Well, turn that crown up oh, okay, down. uh, uh camera two, can I find chance? Oh, yeah, yeah, it's it's right you set? Yeah, it's time to get the emergency doors. doors. Okay, Cookie, I need some names. Hey, look, you do your job, I'll do mine, alright? No, no. No, that's okay, two will do. Okay. Um, Hello, people. How you doing? My name's Cookie. Welcome to our show here. How many people are going to be playing the game? Okay. Uh, one today. All right, we're doing the solo thing. I need a name here. I am right though. Set up over here. I just need a ranch. Good. All right. Uh, camera. One other thing. Are you looking for a seven-question tournament game or more like a full twenty-one question game? How about twenty-one? All right. That's what I needed to know. 30 seconds. Your buzzer is the letter B on your keyboard. A little bit, they need to get your level again. Okay, Hal, can we do the commercial? You got it. 20 seconds. 20 seconds, oh shit. Uh, okay, when you know an answer, buzz in. If you don't, don't. But if you buzz, you only got a few seconds to pick one of the choices or you're gonna lose cash, alright? Hey, good luck. Here we go. Lose the desktop. Okay, thank you. Go to black. Host and standby. Okay, this is for real, guys. Let's go. it happen. Here we go. Okay, pick a category. Let's go with a random choice for our first question. God, you can pick any of them. Who cares? It's number one. All right, let's see what we're doing here. We built this sitcom, and it looks like you can win a thousand greenbacks for this one. All right, you're having a house designed by architect Mike Brady. The rocks for the foundation are being provided by quarry worker Fred Flintstone, and the tools are being provided by tool and die dock foreman Archie Bunker. Which of the following characters would be most able to help you finance this dream home with a bank loan? Darren Stevens, Fred Sanford, Milburn Drysdale, or George Jefferson? Let's go with Milburn. Milburn Drysdale. I... He's the Beverly Pretty Hillbillies much banker. Me? I'd be happy if he'd introduce me to Ellie Mae. How about it? Hit me with a category. Let's try flying cheese. Whoop de do! It's question number two. Here's the category. Flying cheese. A right answer will get you two G's for this question. Okay, we're coming at you. Heads up. You're at a crowded party and one of the guests passes gas. Aside from being plain rude, this guest has also been what? Flagellant, phlegmatic, flagrantly flatulent, or fragrantly flatulent. It's number three here, flagrantly flatulent. Come on, hit me. We need a category. Speak up. I think you're dead. The category behind this question is... Speak up. I think you're dead. Pop a right answer for this one. You got 3,000 greenbacks. Henry David Thoreau, prolific author and creator of the wilderness classic Walden, was unfortunately not so prolific on his deathbed. What were Thoreau's last words? Trees everywhere, moose, Indian, by now, or mom, make me a sandwich. I'm gonna go with mom, makes me, make me a sandwich. No, but wouldn't that have been great? In case you're curious about the correct answer, moose, Indian. God, don't you wonder what the hell he was thinking? Okay, pick a category. Why is this night different from all other nights? Four. The category is... Why is this night different from all other nights? This question is going to be worth $2,001 bills. Etiquette and really large egos dictate the British nobility be addressed as sir. 
Now let's say you invited the following people to a party. Whom would you not have to call sir? Tarzan, Sherlock Holmes, Isaac Newton, or Lord Byron? I'm gonna say Tarzan. Sorry, Tarzan's really Lord Greystoke of the jungle. Oh, really? Too bad you didn't pick this. Ah! Sherlock Holmes, never lorded, never knighted, or nothing. Ah. All right, come on, hit me. We need a category. Let's try some hard guys. Question five. The category, hard guys. And this one's going to be worth $3,000. All right, for this question, you've got to think back to fifth grade science class and recall the Mohs hardness scale, the scale the geologists use to rate the hardness of rocks and minerals. According to the Mohs hardness scale, which one of the following characters might be the most popular with his female companions? Mr. Feldspar, Mr. Talc, Mr. Appetite, or Mr. Topaz? Oh, like I'm supposed to remember this. Or if I even knew this, I'm gonna go with Topaz. On Mo's scale, Mr. Topaz rates the highest. Pretty much a guess. But you know, it's not the hardness of your Topaz, it's how you use it. How about it? Hit me with the category. Let's do insult, suffocation, and fisticuffs. Uh oh, best butts fits mine, whore. It's time for a ticklish best go. All right, now here's your category for this gibberish question. Insult, suffocation, and fisticuffs. Five grand is the opening value for this gibberish question. Now, you're going to have about 30 seconds to solve this puzzle, but I'm going to be taking a little bit of money away every second and a half. Okay, ready? What product slogan does this rhyme with? Dork, D smother, fight Pete. Now don't let the punctuation throw you off. Something your mother... Hit number one, it's a slogan for a type of meat. Uh, they got slogans for everything these days. Pork, it's the other white meat. Okay, let's see what you got. Start typing and hit return when you're done. Pork, it's the other white meat. They don't use that advertisement anymore. Two hints are better than one, but not as good as three hints, my friend. I got it wrong. What did I do Be wrong? Be sure to write for our free recipe book, Dork. The smother fight, Pete. Pork. The other yeah, white. Yeah, and then meat. you could put it on two slices of rye. The other white bread. I got too much wrong. Hey, right, come one. on, hit me. We need a category. Let's see. And you thought passing a stone was painful. Zabba dooba dabbin. Question seven. Next up. And you thought passing a stone was painful. And this one's going to be worth $2,000. Hang on tight, because here we go. If you literally scared the dickens out of someone, which of these literary works would you not expect to see flying out of an orifice? Hard times, great expectations, the telltale heart, or a Christmas carol? Uh, telltale heart was a dickens. The telltale heart by Edgar Allan Poe. You know, I'll tell you, I have a hard time reading Poe because he scares the crap out of me. Okay, pick a category. You don't have to be a human to be stylish. This one's gonna be, you don't have to be human to be stylish. And this one's gonna be worth $1,000. Okay, get yourself set, it's time. Which of the following could wear a navel ring? Goose, platypus, alligator, or cow? Let's see, I think platypus. Hey, watch your language. Oops. The correct answer is cow. <laughs> yeah, only placental mammals have navels. Not that the navel ring thing is really caught on yet with cows, but more and more of them are having their tongues pierced. Ah, uh, cow. Yeah, that was... How about it? Hit me with the category. Two sardines in the royal family. Here's the category. Sardines and the royal family. Okay, this one might be a toughie. It's worth 3,000 bucks. Get ready to buzz, because here it comes. If Flipper were a French king, what logically might his eldest son be known as? The Dolphin Dolphin, the Duke of Dolphin, the Dolphin of Wales, or the Count de Dolphin? Let's go with number two here, Duke. Duke of Dolphin? I think I had my picture taken with that guy at SeaWorld. Should have picked this. The Dolphin Dolphin. 
A dolphin is what the French call a king's oldest son. Oh, interesting. Didn't know that. Alright, come on, hit me. We need a category. Picture was a thousand pickups. Yo, have you been with nasty number 10? The name of this category is A Picture's Worth a Thousand Pickups. Pop a right answer for this one, you got 3,000 greenbacks. Hope you're ready, because here's one coming at you. If the book The Picture of Dorian Gray were a country and western song, what might it appropriately be called? You left me hanging on a wall waiting. You're the reason I started drinking again. Why'd you look so good when I feel so old? Or if your boat's docked, can I board? Let's go with Why'd you look so good? Why do you look good when I feel so old? Dorian Gray, he's the guy who stays young looking while a painting of himself looks older and older. Okay, we're at the end of round one, now on to round two. <laughs> now, we are one round away from the jack attack, and all the questions in this round are going to be worth more than a round one. So pay attention, and let's do it. How about it? Hit me with the category. Let's try where Ellie Mae lays out. And now, 11. All right, let's see what we're doing here. Where Ellie Mae lays out. And this one shouldn't be too tough. 4K for this one. Imagine the Beverly Hillbillies are getting a little more loose with their spending. Jethro says he wants the cement pond replaced with an alimentary canal. Miss Hathaway explains to Jethro that the alimentary canal is what? Part of a toilet, a type of Roman aqueduct, a legal term, or the human digestive tract. I'm gonna go with a legal term. Is drop dead wrong a legal term? Whoop. Here's what you should have guessed. The alimentary canal, it includes your esophagus, stomach, and intestines. You know, that actually oh, might be pretty nice out on the lawn. Okay, pick a category. If they could see me now, they'd be squid. The category behind this question is, if they could see me now, they'd be squid. You get this one right, you got 2,000 bucks coming at you. Okay, hang tight. Put your fingers on your buzzers. Here's the question. Imagine that Kathy Lee Gifford, spokeswoman for Carnival Cruise Lines, wants to try out a new cruise line. What itinerary could she expect for a voyage on Wagner's The Flying Dutchman? Sailing to Denmark by way of Holland, sailing forever until she's freed by love, going on an ill-fated three-hour tour, or going straight to hell? I think going straight to hell. Listen, the woman talks to Regis Philbin every morning. She's already in hell. <laughs> now, the correct answer is she could be sailing for a very long time. The captain of the Flying Dutchman was doomed to sail endlessly until he was redeemed by the love of a woman. Could Kathy Lee be that woman? How about it? Hit me with the category. Let's do the pleasantries of life. Question 13. Not doing too the well today. The category is the pleasantries of life. A right Maybe answer will get you two around, G's hopefully. for this question. Okay, now here's something you do all the time. You see the letters RSVP at the bottom of an invitation and you obey. What are you actually being asked to do? Respond sometime very presently, reserve single visitor's place, répondre s'il vous plaît, or render succinct verbal promise. Let's go with three here. Répondez, s'il vous plaît. Reply, if you please. You know, I never knew that. But then I never took German in college, so there you go. <laughs> All right, come on, hit me. We need a category. It's still the safest way to travel. It's question 14. This one's going to be, it's still the safest way to travel. And we are talking 4,000 big ones. Let's say you're flying Dork Airlines out of Seattle. You're going to Chicago O'Hare, but first you have an aggravating layover in Oklahoma City and then one in Denver. Unfortunately, your luggage gets lost in Oklahoma City. Now, when you finally receive it in Chicago, what three-letter city code will be stamped on the tag hanging from your bag handle? C-H-I-D-E-N-S-E-A or O-R-D? I guess it would be O-R-D. O-R-D. The city code put on luggage refers to its final destination, and for Chicago O'Hare, it's O-R-D. I okay, totally got that. The category. What the hell is a tuffet? Good question.
the category. What the hell is a tuffet? I'm paying out $2,000 if you get this one right. Flight attendants, prepare for takeoff. Now tell me, which of these comes closest to describing what Miss Muffet was eating when that spider came along? Creamy River, cottage cheese, Swiss cheese, or creamy delight? Cottage cheese. Curds and whey. Cottage cheese. Also known as curds and whey. How about it? Hit me with a category. If you think that's big, you should see the whale. Question number 16. And I like it too. Next up. If you think that's big, you should see the whale. This question's gonna be worth $2,001 bills. Okay, we're coming at you. Heads up. If Moby Dick were a country and western song, what would it most appropriately be called? If you want my Moby, come over tonight. I lost my leg, but I ain't done with you yet. I'm on a ship, but you sailed with my heart, or I got too many fish to fry to catch you. I'll be number two. I lost my leg. Righteous. That's right, Ahab lost a leg in his initial encounter with the white whale, and now it's payback time. Okay, pick a category. Do blind dates and animal byproducts. Uh-oh, West Truck licks nine more. Once again, it's time for a... Flicker Piss No Scum. This gibberish questions category is... Blind dates and animal byproducts. And if you're really fast, you can get up to 10,000 bucks for this gibberish question. Okay, now remember, you don't have all the time in the world here. The less time you take, the more money you make. Now remember, there's no screwing on gibberish questions. Ready? Put your fingers on your buzzers and tell me, what does this rhyme with? Say, bud, Jan is lard. You mind? Hmm. Number one, it's what a single person might say. Uh, I have no idea. It's what a single person might say about looking for Mr. Right. It's, uh, what, what it's about how say? difficult it is to find a special guy. True love is hard to find. I tell you, honey, I've been on the dating scene for years, and most of these men are jerks. Let me tell you something. Say, Bud Jan is lied, you mind. A good man is hard to find. Okay. Actually, good contestants are also rather scarce. <laughs> All right, come on, hit me. We need a category. Let's try melt better than cheddar. Song to city. All right, let's see what we're doing here. Melts better than cheddar. It's going to be worth $4,000. On packaged food, the first ingredient listed is the primary ingredient. Which is the first ingredient listed on a package of Velveeta, Oli Resin Paprika, Sorbic Enzymes, Calcium Citrate, or Natural Cheese? I think I'd go with Natural Cheese. You're not going to believe this. But you're right. <laughs> Okay, pick a category. Tonight I'm gonna party like it's $15.99. The category behind this question is, Tonight I'm gonna party like it's $15.99. And if you can figure this one out, I can pay you $4,000. Alright, imagine that the artist, formerly known as Prince, decides to write a song based on Romeo and Juliet. When he gets to the line, Oh Romeo, Romeo, wherefore art thou Romeo? He replaces art thou with are you. What's the best replacement for the word wherefore? Death, why, where, or what? I guess where. Yes, where, as in you wear rejection well. And here's the right answer. Wherefore really means why. For example, wherefore did Prince change his name to that symbol thingy? How about it? Hit me with a category. What did you call me? Uh, question number 20. Here's the category. What did you call me? I'll pay you $4,000 bills for this one if you get it right. Get your eyes focused on the screen. Here we go. Susie is polydactylous, meaning she has too many of what? Fish, breasts, boyfriends, or toes. I'm gonna say boyfriends. Too many boyfriends? Yeah, I gotta tell you, she's got bigger problems than that. In case you're curious about the correct answer, <laughs> Toesies. And these three little piggies went to college, and these four other piggies got a condo together, and these two... 
Hey, come on, hit me. We need a category. Let's do up your ante. Jack attack time. Soon as you see two words on the screen that go together, buzz in. Two thousand bucks if you're right. Two thousand off if you're wrong. Every time you're wrong. And careful, cause not all matches are equal. Remember the clue. It's gotta be a match that fits this clue. Up your ante. Remember that clue. Now let's see how much you can up your ante right now. Andy Taylor. I am gonna mess this up real bad. Ant B, guess. Dorothy and Toe, though, that's Auntie May. Uh, from Auntie M, sorry. Uh, brand of syrup, Aunt Jemima. Samantha Stevens. Jane Grady's lookalike is Aunt Jenny, apparently. Uh, Robin and is Aunt Who, I don't even know. Aunt Harriet. Scarecrow, Tom Sawyer. Polly looks like the answer there. You were definitely jamming on that deck attack. Let's find out how it helped your score. I did better than I should have there. That's the game. Not a great game there. Pretty low well, score. When I think of you, I think of superlatives like great, amazing, fabulous, trivia geek with no social life, stuff like that. But don't thank me because the real truth is you don't know Jack. Well, that's another episode. As always, I ask you to like, share, subscribe, comment if you want to, and watch every second of my videos. All that helps me out. If you want to support me, you can click on my name Rido. On the right will be a blue button that says support this channel. Click it, make a donation. And if you want a friend to follow me on basically any social media sites, there's a whole bunch of links down below. Thanks for watching. Have a good this evening. This cereal, it is delicious. It makes me want to do a roundhouse kick. Chuck Lee, you are truly the master of the breakfast world. I bow before you as a sign of ultimate respect. Rule number one, Grasshopper. Never let your guard down. Hiya! Ready? Ready? Whoa! Domo arigato, buddy. Got a motor! Hey, it's Chucky the Chipmunk. Get it! Whoa! Hey, you kids, quit nibbling at my head. Why don't you pick on someone your own size? Come on, Chucky. Just let us nibble on you. You're Chucktastic. No way. Try to catch me, you crazy kids. Whoa! Whoa! You crazy Chipmunk. Everyone knows that fruity chocolate curd puppies are for children because they're Chucktastic. When Her Majesty's citizens are in trouble, they call on the government. But when the government is in trouble, they call on one man. All right. Nate Shapiro is Secret Agent 004. How you doing there, Mr. Prime Minister? 004. 25 cubic liters of enriched plutonium have been stolen from Reactor X-13. We believe Axis Greed has built the bomb. What do you want me to do, Chief? Recover the plutonium, defuse the bomb, or defuse the bomb and kill the perpetrators? 004, do you think I'm beautiful? I'll say, you're kind of a cross between Botticelli's Birth of Venus and the lead character in Andrew Lloyd Webber's Cats. Who do you think you are, 004? You'll never stop us. Oh, what do you think will happen? You'll actually blow up England, you'll take control of the channel, or I'll kill you on the spot with my cigarette lighter. We will blow up England? I don't think so. <laughs> Nate Shapiro is Secret Agent 004 in... Watch your back, Jack. With all of the guns and violence today We need a toy for the kids that won't blow them away He's got a ponytail and he works at the mall He's the health food store boy doll Just pull his string and you'll hear him say Morning Mrs. Johnson, we've got fresh prunes today And if you pull it again you'll hear him decree 
Try our fresh soy cakes and organic muesli. We've got tofu kashi and grilled tempeh. And our wheatgrass shots are groovy today. Can I get you a paper or plastic sack? I've got my eyebrow pierced and a hemp backpack. I ride my bike up and down the bay. And I really don't mind if you're straight, bi, or gay. Let's go see the dead, we'll have us a ball. I'm the health food store boy doll. It's the health food store boy doll. Birkenstock sold separately.